Hi, my name is Mike Gardner, and I'm the head of customer success at Kate Privacy. Today, I'd like to talk to you about protecting sensitive data that you may want to use for machine learning predictions, and also talk about protecting the models themselves. My goal will be to arm you with an easy way to securely deploy a model and perform inference with sensitive data in a serverless fashion, which means without provisioning or managing infrastructure. So we use Kate Privacy to do this. So I'll explain what that is and how it works. So we understand in detail how it provides protection. And by the end, we'll have a demo performing secure inference on confidential data. But hopefully you'll also see how you can use the same tools and techniques to build solutions that go beyond prediction. For example, pre-processing, training, even data collaboration scenarios. But let's start with why this matters. At K Privacy, we believe that the most useful apps will be those that leverage our most sensitive data. We also believe that AI has the potential to solve some of the world's most important problems. But in order to do so, it'll require data that we may currently be reluctant uh, to use for legal or privacy concerns. So this implies that currently we're not getting the full utility of some data or model accuracy due to the dilution of usefulness that can occur by removing, masking, or otherwise trying to, uh, to protect sensitive data. Or in some cases, we're not using certain data at all due to its sensitive or confidential nature, or the risk is too great that it leaks. Therefore, CAPE is hoping to help developers and data scientists be better stewards of data by making it easy to have good security by default. But that's hard. Data security is hard. The data journey in data science can get pretty complex. So even if we simplify it and look at a flow similar to this, data takes many hops along its journey. Each destination adds risk. It can be persisted multiple times in multiple places. It may be protected at rest or in transit, but usually not while being processed. It can be accidentally logged or leaked through stack traces. Uh, we know this problem well. So the best security would be to client-side encrypt data. And that way the data journey isn't as risky once it's encrypted. So if we encrypt as soon as we collect, again, the cloud journey is uh, doesn't matter so much, but how will you process it? Who gets to decrypt it? Key management is tricky. And by the way, you can't get it wrong. It's really important. Encryption is just plain complicated. It usually involves multiple teams. Uh, they have to coordinate, they have to uh, create keys, but also uh, create policies. This results in latency. And then when you're finished, which libraries are gonna use, um, it's a messy process. So K okay, Privacy was built to solve this problem and th some of these challenges we discussed. Um, this way, the developer or the data scientist can focus more on the value of your application and less on security. Cape provides a serverless solution to securely deploy services like a model using Cape Deploy, to easily encrypt data fast and offline using Cape Encrypt, and then lastly, to securely invoke your services with that encrypted data using Cape Run. Key management is handled automatically. In fact, the scope of the keys can be limited now to processes or functions, not just people. And so you can be assured that data will only be used for the intended purpose. And you don't have to trust the person that has access to the keys to do only what they're supposed to do. So in a way, this is a step change in the right direction. CAPE can also protect any kind of data. So whether we're talking field level, um, batches, um, binaries like images or audio, it doesn't matter, you can CAPE encrypt it. So as an analogy, maybe we think of Cape like you think of your browser. It just connects using TLS to almost every website you visit. You don't have to think about it or manually do anything. It's secure, it's encrypted, it's by default. Now, if there's a problem with the website, you might get a nasty error message on screen, but that's good. And that's how Cape works. By default, it makes sure that everything you do is secure by default. And if every security star is not aligned, things will fail and it will tell you why. And I think that's what we want. So there are uh, lots of client SDKs for most popular languages that Cape provides. Let's look at PyCape, the one for Python. We'll take a quick segue here to a Jupyter Notebook, which should be familiar. We'll, this is PyCape, and we'll just run a prediction or two. Um, the first thing we do is pip install PyCape, which I've done. Now we can 
import cape into our Python notebook. I'm going to run a prediction here simply by calling invoke with this model input data. And we'll get a response here that says where failure. And then I invoked it again with another piece of data. And this is no failure. So you can see this is a predictive maintenance model. So things get more interesting as we continue here, where I'll set up the scenario with plain text. So this is the same no failure data that I used above. But I'm going to first call Cape Encrypt, and you'll see the ciphertext that's produced. And this is actually what I'm going to send when I invoke that model again. It's not the plain text, but it's the ciphertext. But even so, I received the no failure result, which is what we expected. And this is how, using PyCape and Cape Privacy, you can invoke models using encrypted data, as simple as that when you have the Python client. So I wanted to just show you a quick visual here, but let's continue um, to discuss CAPE in a little more detail. Uh, specifically, how is it different? This might look like all the other libraries or maybe services that you've used with Python before, but why is CAPE different? Well, first of all, we're protecting data in use. You still receive the data at rest encryption or in transit that still remains, but now while your data processes, it'll also uh, be encrypted from the perspective of an outsider. So the other important uh, thing is that everything happens within a secure enclave. And so CAPE enclaves are confidential computing environments that process within a trusted execution environment. These are highly constrained with encrypted memory, no network, no disk, and no interactive access. So no human, including admins, can ever get access to them. So how do they communicate with the outside world or other services? There is a process called cryptographic attestation. This is a unique feature of confidential computing enclaves where they can attest to clients or services that they're trustworthy, authentic, um, that they're running the right software, et cetera. And only then will that handshake be successful. And again, this is similar to when a browser connects to a secure website. There's this negotiation. There's this uh, signing uh, in certificates that have to be trusted. The same exact thing is occurring. We call this cryptographic attestation. And this ensures that you're connecting to the thing you expect to um, and that you can trust it. So that is... Uh, explains enclaves and attestation. Let's talk about processing the encrypted data. Once the encrypted data arrives within the enclave, the enclave can use this cryptographic attestation process with a key management store. And so by doing so, this is how we can map the scope of a key policy to, a, to an enclave or a function or a model and not a human. And this is important, again, to ensure that we don't have to trust a person with keys. So hopefully this sheds a bit of light as to why Kate privacy is different and more secure. Um, but the key point here is that it's all by default. So we've talked through it to help demystify the process, but at the end of the day, this just happens when you connect um, with a Kate client. So let's turn our attention to a real life scenario. And so this is a project that I've had the opportunity to work on uh, with one of our customers, and it's a streaming telemetry data set that uh, needed to perform predictions in near real time after being streamed to an event um, streaming platform like Kafka. But that uh, telemetry data had some sensitive fields. And so for the purposes of discussion, let's pretend it's something like GPS where we don't want to reveal that location data. It could be different by industry, of course, um, healthcare, PII for financial services, et cetera. But in this case, let's just say that the data coming from the sensor is sensitive, but we want to perform predictions, and these are the requirements. What we'll build here together and then show running is this solution where we'll start with deploying a predictive maintenance model to CAPE. We'll then encrypt the data coming off the sensor find side encrypted immediately as soon as we touch it, and then stream that in encrypted form to Kafka, where we can then consume it and send it to Cape to perform uh, predictions. So this is uh, the demo, and I'm gonna jump over to some code here so we can quickly do an end-to-end -end sort of uh, what this looks like in real life. 
Step one is we need a model. So let's deploy this model that I have here. Um, apt up. This is a folder where I have dependencies and a Python entry point. And really what at the end of the day, what this does is accept some input data, makes a prediction, and tells us if it's a where failure or no failure. So to deploy this, you simply download the CAPE command line interface and log into CAPE, then do CAPE deploy on the folder that contains the contents of the project. So I'll close that up and we'll let that deploy. What's occurring right now is the attestation process. So I'm using the PyCAPE client, which is verifying the Enclave um, and then encrypting the payload, which is the model and the code, and then deploying it out to CAPE where it'll be able to be called. So that's finished. Let's just do a sanity check and we'll call this. I'll just use the ID and we'll need some input data, which I'll grab over here. Again, we're just going to test it out. And this is plain text. I haven't encrypted anything, but I am gonna test that that model is working and it does, so that's great. Um, the second thing we'll do again as a sanity check is use the CLI to keep encrypt that input data. And you'll see the ciphertext that's returned. I'm gonna call that same model, but this time I'll actually send over this encrypted form of that input data directly. And if all goes well, it'll just consume this encrypted data, run the model and give me a result. So that's great. I got the where, where failure is the prediction and it looks like things are working. Um, before we show the running demo, I wanna show you the code that we're going to run. And this is basically a Python app that connects to CAPE, um, encrypts the data and runs a prediction. And those methods are invoking CAPE. So that's sort of the under the covers. I'm using PyCAPE as the Python library. And I'm also using Gradio, which is a Python library that allows us to put a GUI on top of a function. And it looks like I don't have that running. So let's start that up. Um, we're gonna run the program I just showed you. Now we'll go back to the browser. Here we go. Okay, so this is just again, a library called Gradio, which is fantastic to put a GUI on top of Python operations. And let's start consuming that stream. So what we'll see here um, is the actual plain text of the sensor data. Then we'll see the ciphertext version after we keep encrypt it, which will be right here, the second box. And then lastly, at the bottom will be the result of the prediction after we've sent the encrypted data to CAPE. Uh, to get that uh, to run the model. And we'll let it run for a few seconds here. I just want to make sure this changes at least on occasion because uh, we want to see that it's actually running and working instead of just hard coded, no failure, but I'm sure we'll get some where failures. I think we have some very uh, not faulty equipment here. Ah, there we go. We got a wear failure, a little bit longer than I expected, but you get the idea. Obviously data dependent, but at the end of the day, uh, what we're seeing here is just a visual of a demo that mimics this um, streaming sensor use case where we wanted to perform predictions off of data that was sensitive. Um, that's my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I encourage everyone to go to kateprivacy.com. We have a five-minute quick start uh, where you can download and try all of this for free. And of course, we're happy to help you um, through our Discord if you need any assistance. Appreciate you listening.